Uh, first of all, it gives me great pleasure to be here. Um, because, as P.S. Kibijo said, IG, you have kept the tradition of ensuring that every year you hold this meeting, although this year it has uh, some special significance because we are preparing ourselves for the general elections. Um, we have met here today to review the state of security in the country and uh, our readiness for the next general elections because we begin now the countdown to preparing uh, for the general elections. So first of all, I want to start by uh, discharging my first duty and obligation, which is to convey to you and to bring to you regards and good wishes from His Excellency, our President and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, Honorable Uru Kenyatta. Uh, His Excellency, the President, in addition, asked me to say the following two points to you. One, uh, that he is grateful for the work that you do. And because of the commitment and the level of professionalism that you have displayed recently, the confidence of the public has continued to grow in our police service. And indeed, as P.S. Kibijo pointed out, our country is safe and secure. And we are going about economic activities uh, uninterrupted because of the work that you men and women in uniform do for our country. And on behalf of our grateful nation, His Excellency the President asked me to say thank you to you. <laughs> Secondly, uh, His Excellency the President asked me to say this to you, that uh, of course he's looking forward to meeting with you during our joint security uh, conference, which will happen later in the year, bringing us together with our colleagues in the National Government Administration. But he asked me to say thank you to you for a second reason. Since March last year, as a country, we confronted the challenge of COVID-19. We are putting in place so many containment measures, and our security teams, especially you, the police officers, have been at the forefront working with our national government administration officials to enforce these containment measures. By and large, although we continue to suffer and we are not out of the goods yet, uh, you have borne the brunt of working with our population to enforce the containment measures. And for this, we thank you for the sacrifices you have made and the commitment you have shown. And His Excellency, the President asked me to register his personal gratitude to you for the manner in which you have helped enforce the containment measures. Uh, now, having said that, um, let me go to my brief remarks before we start this meeting. Uh, recently, we met the county and regional commissioners uh, who are critical role players in preparing ourselves for the elections. Um, we pointed out a number of things that we need to do. We've done well, and shortly I am personally looking forward to the presentation of the report on the Police Performance Delivery Index, which I am happy about because we decided that we are going to measure ourselves by surveying public opinion on the work that we do. And uh, since 2009, when our you know, when the confidence of the public was at 29%, it has now grown, and uh, we are soon going to see the report when it's presented to us, that shows that we have achieved about 63% uh, level of confidence by the public. Where, whereas that is a remarkable improvement, uh, I am interested in seeing an over 80% level of confidence as we go forward. And I hope, IG, as we spend our time here today, we are also going to very candidly look at what is it we need to do to deepen the confidence of the public in the work that we do. Because, my friends, um, we work for our people. And uh, it doesn't matter uh, how hard we work if we are not able to secure their trust and their confidence. We, we should ask the question, what is that that we need to do to secure the confidence of our people? And there are a number of things we can do, some of which I'll talk about briefly after these wonderful good people from the fourth estate are, are out. 
Uh, we must build the trust of our people in the police service and in the services that we give our people. And one more time again, in the, in the uh, next year's general elections, and as we prepare for this, we have been given an opportunity to work with our people to deepen their confidence in the work we do. So I'm going to propose several things to us as we work on this. Number one, I would like to ask you as senior police officers across the country uh, to begin changing our approach to how we provide security to communities uh, with a view to deepening the trust of our people. And changing the approach means we need to work more with communities. Uh, everywhere I've gone in this country, I've often challenged senior police officers. I ask them a question. Do you know the archbishop of the Catholic Church in the diocese of your jurisdiction? Do you know the local imam? Have you met the Anglican Church bishop of your area of jurisdiction? Have you met the chair of the Traders Association in your town as the county commander? Do you know the, the chairperson of the Hawkers Association? Do you have their number? Do you sometimes talk to them? We, we cannot wait for a crisis, and we should never be known as enforcers or force users. We should also be known as people who work with and in communities to foster peace, good relations, and that is how we are going to succeed, to raise the level of confidence from 63% to 80 and to 90%. We must change the way we work. And then for us to keep the country stable and secure as we go through uh, the uh, electoral cycle, we have to do those things that uh, will build and enhance relations with our people. Uh, we need to look at, number two, alternative ways of ensuring that we prepare for security beforehand. Sitting down with communities and community leaders and uh, discussing security matters with them long before things happen is fundamental. For those of you whose jurisdictions cover urban areas, Sitting together with uh, neighborhood associations uh, and leaderships of those neighborhood associations will enhance uh, the confidence of our people, but also give you information you need beforehand to deal with providing security uh, to our people. Number three, I think we need to manage our officers better. Uh, the challenge we have, and, and sometimes we, we shouldn't run away from things. When people raise, when members of the public raise concerns with us, we should respond to them. You are officers here, and I have this opportunity that I want to tell you in public that where I think we have not done very well as senior officers is managing the troops, the people we have who have been entrusted to us. Uh, there are some police stations you'll go to if you are the county commander. Uh, in some places, I, I don't know, soon I'm going to ask the inspector general of police uh, to start conducting that survey where he asks every one of their county commanders whether they have visited all their police stations in their jurisdiction. Uh, and, and met the uh, junior officers who work there uh, with you, and sometimes taken time to know them and sit down with them. A lot of the officers we receive from training are young people uh, who face challenges of one kind or the other. Recently, we have noticed some challenges that we are dealing with. My colleagues who are seated on this side of the room will bear me out, the DCI, the DIGs, and the Inspector General himself, about certain challenges related to uh, uh, drunkenness, uh, and, and poor behavior on some of our, you know, our junior officers. I mean, wh why should I pretend here when you have been seeing clips uh, doing rounds, you know, of officers who have one or the other challenge? And this is related to personal challenges that we can resolve by, by knowing uh, our officers. You should get into a Know Your Officers campaign where you know the officers who work under your command and interact with them at the personal level. Some of these young people need to be advised and need to be supported as we go along. Uh, number four, I, 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 want, I cannot overemphasize the issue of uh, discipline because this issue uh, has affected us. And you know this, there are areas of our uh, country where we have had certain challenges, uh, discipline amongst uh, officers. And, and you, our regional and county commanders, information commanders are the people we depend upon to ensure that you enforce discipline amongst our officers. When certain things happen, and, 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 and uh, it, it's also it's fair to be truthful and sincere with our people. When certain things happen in certain jurisdictions, and then they are very embarrassing and frustrating to all of us, uh, the things that we do not want to see, but uh, they happen, and, and we have to face them. We have to be responsive to the public's concerns and so on. That's why 
I asked the Inspector General uh, last week to send the Internal Affairs Unit team to a polling station, I mean a police station called Ryoma in Kisi, where two people, uh, you know, were killed. I have received, seen a report from the Inspector General about what is going on there, and I want to commit to the public that we will act and take decisions uh, in the direction that investigation is going to show us. If the officers who are involved in making mistakes, they will of course face the full force of the law because we are here to uh, ensure that we provide services to our people. And my colleagues, this is something we cannot get to say. A time has come when we need to be a bit more strict in terms of how we coordinate and organize the officers that we have and ensure that they are completely disciplined um, uh, in the discharge of their duties. The last two issues that I want to talk about are a bit uh, uh, worrisome to me. Uh, we had a very successful campaign uh, two years ago uh, against illicit brews. In some parts of the country, this is coming back. You know yourselves, uh, you know, you know your areas of jurisdiction, uh, where again uh, we have seen um, an increase and uh, and and. and a new culture of consumption of illicit brews. IG, I believe at the end of this conference, you will leave with the resolve and ask our senior officers when they go to the field to address this matter and sort it out uh, uh, effectively. Um, lastly, I thank you because the levels of petty crime have reduced significantly in, in, in many of our urban areas, as uh, my colleague the PS pointed out. And this is because of the work uh, that, that, that you do. Um, the regional uh, and county police commanders who are here, I want you to know we are very, very grateful. Some of your patrols, I mean, every day by 4 a.m. in the morning, we get reports from you, uh, you know, through the, the IG and what is going on. We are very grateful because of the level of care and alertness that you have maintained so that those patrols have yielded the results that we, uh, we desire. Uh, 